Hello, Hateless Gaming here uh, today, bringing you a new video. Uh, today we are going to be talking about travel fits and why you want a travel fit. Because travel fits are helpful and nice, and they get you from A to B in relative safety in high sec. And this is a big part of life when you live in high sec, because suicide gangs are a thing, and when you fly shiny things, you're going to pay a big price when you do finally get killed. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into game. Uh, we have here uh, my anti-incursion golem that I've been flying for the past few streams and multi-boxing with. This thing's got a pretty price tag on it, and uh, not a whole lot of VHP uh, when not simulated. And if we were traveling with this at this price point, it is profitable to kill. And so our goal is to make it unprofitable to kill, so that we can travel in safety. Uh, there's a few tips for this. Uh, first off... Um, you want to add, you want to increase this number as much as possible and also maintain a high kinetic and thermal if you're worried about catalyst uh, and it's catalyst, catalyst, talos, and vexor ganks is what you're worried about uh, mostly because those are the highest like DPS per, per cost. Uh, or if you're worried about thresher ganks, uh, tornado ganks and um, Corsair ganks, you really want to get make sure your EM and thermal is up. A safe bet is to make sure the thermal gets high because that helps against both. Uh, but having an EM hole encourages Corsairs and uh, laser boats to be the or Corsairs or uh, anti EM boats such as tornadoes to be the uh, the, the target ship. So. Without further ado, uh, I have a travel fit already made, and I'm going to explain why uh, this is my travel fit. Uh, I'm not explaining this fit because uh, through a bunch of testing and whatnot, uh, this fit works for the purpose, but I don't feel it's effective, and so I don't want to advertise it too highly. Uh, and I want to try a cheaper setup. So these are being set up to, my entire fleet's being set up to travel back home to trade out for a, a new fleet. I'm going to go park it near Jita. Not in Jita, but near Jita. Um, but I have a, a travel base. Now, this doesn't have a weapon or rigs on it. Uh, but basically, the premise of this, as you can see, is we have as much EHP as possible. And if we run these hot, uh, we're up to 477k EHP, which is really nice. I think what I ended up doing with uh, is this fit here, because we still have the torpedoes on, and it has the same rigs, and then in the cargo has... Um, all of my modules on my ship. Uh, so all the modules that were in the ship are there. So this is the same cost as the previous fit. Uh, and again, 353. Without the EM hardener, uh, we're not quite as much, but I don't have the EM hardener with me. So I don't get to use the EM hardener. And with that EM, EM hole not being plugged, it's not quite as strong. Uh, so this would be a solid travel base. I think we have C types on there and then X type EM making up at 477. So the premise is, is you put as many shield extenders as you can in the mids, uh, and then two hardeners, and then uh, optionally an EM hardener, depending on your fit, if you want to do it or not. Uh, but if you don't do the EM hardener, you put another shield extender on. And then in the lows, every single travel fit should have a damage control unit. Uh, this is this gives you a lot of EHP in uh, hull which is huge. Uh, so uh, it doesn't actually bring you up to 71%, but for non-marauders, it brings you up to 60%. And this adds an ex extra 15, bringing you to 71. Uh, the power diagnostic unit, power diagnostic units are the only module in the low slot that increase the shield hit points by 5%. Uh, so that gives us a little bit of additional shield hit points. Uh, for armor ships, uh, the basic premise is very similar. Uh, you would grab your, uh, we'll use a Paladin, for example, here. Uh, there's not really much you can do to increase your, your EHP in the mids, uh, but you can take off your, your PvP modules or PvE modules that you use. You can put on shield extenders if you'd like. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do that. We'll put a couple of shield extenders on here. Uh, Republic Fleet, Republic Fleet, Republic Fleet. Uh, and I think I'll just put on two regular T2 hardeners. We're, we're not going to spend a lot on the shields. Uh, so shield hardeners, uh, multi-spectrums, we'll just go th throw two of those on there. Brings us up to 100k HP already, and then we still have the eight lows for armor. Uh, we're going to start with that damage control, because if you guys remember, the damage control is really helpful. So pull in armor, DCU. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw that guy up there. That brings up an additional 23,000 EHP. 
And then we're going to go ahead and throw on some plates. So all plates and transverse bulkheads and shield extenders just got a buff on all the battleships. It's pretty cool. So we go armor plates. Let me get the big boys on here. Uh, we'll put three of them on, maybe four. Uh, this brings us up to 193. And then we're going to want to use uh, whatever energized armor resistance membrane that we have uh, for our PVE. Uh, if you happen to have A-types because you're a baller and you're doing incursions, put those on there, man. Uh, that'll give you a lot more EHP. Uh, I'm not sure if the third is better. I'm going to put the third on there, 280. Or if the plate is better. Uh, we're at 280, 283. So the plate's actually better in this case. Uh, so we got those. Uh, we might want to play with a energized, um, energized uh, or a, a uh, explosive membrane. Uh, explosive doesn't protect against anything but tornadoes because tornadoes can change their damage type. And if they know that you're uh, armor, did I just look at explosive? So this may be a better result, but it looks like the, the plate is even better in this case because we were at 280 before. Uh, so the plate appears to be a really good mod. Um, and then we get the, uh, what is it? The Bastion modules and is in turrets and launchers. And then uh, the siege module is really important. So in a gank, your first move is going to be to try and escape. But if you fail to escape, you always siege your marauder. Um, and then I would assume that you have guns and you start firing back every time. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're going to die or not. You want to... Uh, get as much back, but at 395k EHP, uh, you're going to be a pretty difficult thing to kill. Uh, we can also overheat these. Uh, you can do regular hardeners. Uh, I suggest you play with your fit and kind of figure out what gets the most EHP. And then you store all your regular like combat mods inside the ship rather than trying to uh, fly with all your combat mods fit. But this idea gives you a bunch of e extra EHP. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to talk about is something that's not a Marauder. Uh, the Rattlesnake is really well known uh, for being a very, uh, very tanky ship. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look at Coinless. I have uh, Rattlesnake fits for Coinless here. Uh, and I have a Travel Mark II. Uh, we did the same thing. It still has the heavies across. It has all the modules inside uh, that were on the ship. And then we have the same hardeners. We have all the extenders. And we run these hot. This is at 459 does not require a siege module, still has rapid heavy launchers on it, and has an EM rig uh, for this one. And then it's at 459k EHP. Same premise though. We have the large shield extenders, a couple hardeners, uh, damage control unit, and then a bunch of power diagnostics. Uh, we generally don't talk about rigs when we're making travel fits because our normal like PVE fit or whatever you're flying with will have different rigs in a travel fit. But if you're on your first deployment or your first time moving it, uh, or if you're moving it one way and only one time, it might be worth putting on extender rigs or Trimark armors, depending on your fit. Um, but let's see how much more nutty this gets if we were to uh, put uh, shield extender rigs on this. If we were to go here, here, go hardware, go rigs, and then shield rigs, large shield rigs, and we'll go ahead and put on two extenders. We're at 637k EHP. Uh, and then we can go put that guy on uh, 712,000. Holy cow, that's a lot of EHP. Um, this would be very difficult to kill, uh, regardless of the uh, thing. And then you could, in theory, if you have a Nighthawk in the ball uh, or a command ship of some kind, it could also give uh, additional EHP. I believe the f percent increase is 44%. We'll say an additional 300,000. That's easily a million EHP. That is absolutely silly and very, very difficult to kill in high sack. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over uh, the idea of putting together a travel fit. Uh, they're relatively cheap uh, to have the modules for them. Uh, I believe Buck Warbash's uh, travel modules uh, are in the item hanger. Uh, and the total cost of the travel modules uh, is 6 million isk if we had a Tech 2 shield uh, multi-spectrum shield hardener. Uh, the travel fit has, uh, I put a second uh, Pythom C-type in it uh, for the travel fit, although it's probably better for me to run a Tech 2 uh, because a Pythom C-type adds to the profitability of killing it. Um, but I did that because I have two. And um, same thing with this character. Uh, the addition of a travel fit is only 7.8 million uh, isk and is only 105 M3 of the Marauders, like 1,000. 
uh, and then regular battleships, I believe, also have somewhere around a thousand M3 of storage. Uh, so you can easily afford to carry your travel fits with you when moving from A to B uh, in high sec. And then uh, when you're flying again, make sure that you're you're paying attention so your hardeners actually get turned on and overheated in the event of a gank. And of course, if capable and you have your weapons fit to your uh, ship, as I always have practiced that my weapons are fit to my ship for traveling, I make sure that they are ready to go as well. It's always a good idea to use your travel fits, especially incursion runners. Uh, but for me, moving day is today. I know it's a day early, uh, but I want to park the expensive ships and try a couple cheap compositions for incursions. Uh, and so it sparked me to talk about travel fittings. Uh, if you like this video, uh, make sure you uh, post comments below. Uh, let me know how you guys have had your travel ships save you. Or if you guys have had travel ships get ganked anyways, uh, because you had so much bling in the cargo. Uh, anyways, make sure you guys fly fun. Enjoy your time in EVE Online. Continue bringing each other up. And we will see you guys in the next one.